Right, and then their their second album came out in the same year, about uh, yeah, yeah, less than a year later, same year. Yep. Like, uh, yep. Black and Sabbath came out in February. Paranoid came yep. out in September. Yep. And this is arguably the crowning jewel of the of the Ozzy years. Um, although you know, I love all those albums, but Paranoid is the one with not only the uh, the title of the title track being, you know, a very well-known song that Ozzy still performs to this day with or without Sabbath, but it's got Iron Man and it's got a bunch of other songs that frankly are better than Iron Man and Paranoid. Uh, in my opinion, Iron Man and Paranoid are probably the weakest two tracks on the album. Uh, not that they're weak tracks. They, they aren't, but a Paranoid was written in 10 minutes because they didn't have, they, they, they had recorded what they had and they needed one more song. And the album was due to be called War Pigs. And the cover of the album reflected, the, the cover art reflected the idea of War Pigs. It didn't reflect the idea of Paranoid. And what happened was they said, we need one more track. Can you go write something? And they wrote, they went out in the hallway of the studio and Tony came up with the riff and they wrote Paranoid in like 10 minutes. And then they recorded it. And everybody said, oh, this, is, this should be the single. And then they said, oh, this should be the title of the album, but let's not bother changing the artwork on the cover. <laughs> it's a guy with and a sword. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's a war pig, theoretically, right? Pig being a euphemism for cops back in the 70s. In this country, they were calling the cops pigs, rightly or wrongly. And, you know, so they had this artwork and... Um, it's like a couple. It was it, the album was or? all set to be, a, be be called War Pigs, which the rec, which the record company didn't like anyway. They didn't want the they didn't want the album to be called War Pigs. They were afraid of the backlash of that. So they said, "Let's call it Paranoid," and they called it Paranoid, but they didn't change the artwork. And as you can tell, the band at this point still had no creative control over their over their release. It was made in slight, I think they did a slightly better studio and they took slightly longer. I think it was still done in like under 45 hours or something like that. It was still done quickly, uh, but it was done a little bit better than Black Sabbath was done. Um, the strength of this album is the songs and the material and the fact that they're still young and hungry and on the way up. They're not yet uh, too heavily into drugs Although you're starting to, you know, you're starting to get into that a little bit, but you know, this was a mostly uh, a band that was into weed and you know some drink. Uh, they weren't getting into heavy drugs yet. The cocaine hadn't arrived, you know, the heroin hadn't arrived yet. All of that stuff that came somewhat later. You still got a band that's you know very young, very hungry, and on the way up, and um, you know. You, you talk about the tracks on this album and you've got uh, Beyond the Title Track and... Um, you got War Pigs, Paranoid, you've got, Planet Caravan, Iron Man, Electric Funeral. Electric Funeral is, is, is absolutely devastatingly heavy yeah. and wonderful. It's so evil uh, sounding. <laughs> oh my God, it's such a great riff. And then, you know, towards the end, you're getting into um, Fairies Wear Boots, which is also one of those ones where uh, you have a lot of dynamic changes. It's got, yeah, right. And then... Um, I also love see. the instrument, uh, instrumental track, Red Salad, da, 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 with the drum yep. solo. Yep, yep. So... Um, yeah, just brilliant from uh, start to finish. It really is. And uh, like I said... Of the first albums when Ozzy was with them, this is arguably the crowning jewel um, of that collection. Uh, they're all good, but I mean, this is the one with the hits on it. And, uh, and Ozzy Osbourne has such a perfect voice for the music too. I mean, we, we talk about Tony's sound, but Ozzy's voice of this era is also just... Uh, you know, right. If, if he, and the other thing, you know, the, here's, you know, something else we want to talk about, about the discography and the changes of singers over the course of time. If you listen to Iron Man, for example, you're going to hear how Ozzy sings 
with Black Sabbath. Between Ozzy and Dio, you've got most of the Sabbath catalog, uh, the famous part of the Sabbath catalog kind of covered. And they're two very different kinds of singers. And if you, if you listen to Iron Man, you hear a characteristic thing that Ozzy does, which is he sings the riff. He sings the same riff that Tony's playing. Yeah. Okay? You hear, da, you know, heavy boots of lead fills his victims full. He's singing the, the same thing that Tony's playing. Yeah. And when you get to Ronnie James Dio, which we'll talk about in a little bit, Ronnie doesn't sing like that. Ronnie doesn't sing on the riff. Ronnie sings between the riffs. And Tony said this was, a, you know, a, a, a sort of a difference in why the two bands sound somewhat different. And the people who, you know, were always like the Dio version has never been, you know, in their minds, it's never been Black Sabbath. I think that's a little extreme. I think it still sounds like Black Sabbath to me, but it's a different Sabbath, clearly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 